What's up, everybody? It's your boy, JP. And man, I'm excited right now. If y'all watched my video that I just posted on the iPhone SE 2020, I mentioned that I would have the Red Magic 5G in my next video, um, either Monday or Tuesday. Well, today is Friday, the same day that I did the video for the new iPhone. And my Red Magic 5G came in early. I quickly got it home and unboxed so I could do my quick overview for y'all. So no need to wait till no need to wait till Monday or Tuesday. Off top, y'all, the build quality on this phone is gorgeous. It is sexy. Don't let the thickness of it turn you off. It's thick because it has a gigantic battery. But as thick as it is, it's still super freaking nice old in the hand. It's actually a completely different build construction than the previous Red Magics. Um, on my channel, I do have uh, videos for both the Red Magic 3 and Red Magic 3S. And uh, the backs on those are aluminum. This is glass front and back. It's Gorilla Glass. I think it's Gorilla Glass 5. Don't hold me to that, but I think it's Gorilla Glass 5. Pretty sure it's not 6. But um, yeah, y'all, here's the box here. Look at that. Look at that nice artwork. And this is the third box I've seen with the div. This is the third different artwork I've seen on the boxes. I've seen two other um, boxes, and uh, I don't really know how to tell which one you're going to get, honestly. And uh, I didn't see this one until I got it myself. Um, I was really thinking I was going to get one of the other two because I, you know, didn't know that they had other ones. <laughs> but um, your booklet, your warranty card. The sleeve that the phone comes in that says Red Magic and tells you about the end display fingerprint sensor. This is the first Red Magic gaming phone with the end display fingerprint sensor. The other ones, the, the Red Magic 3 and 3S did not have it. They had it on the rear. And uh, the box setup is very similar, though. The, the contents, the way that they separate everything. There's your red USB Type-C cable and your fast charge adapter. Here's your box. And um, kind of, kind of, without, without showing my IMEI, I'm going to... Kind of let y'all take a look at those specs there right quick. 4,500 milliamp battery. And um, this does have DDR5 RAM. And um, and um, this is the 8 gig model. They do have a 12 and a 16. I don't think the 16 gig is available yet. I'm not entirely sure. I think the 12 is. Um, this is the... Um, the mirror black version, the uh, Eclipse Black is what they call it. It has 128 gigs internal, no expansion. Snapdragon 865 with the X55 5G modem. And I'll get to that here in a second because I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions about the bands. Um, it does have an internal cooling fan. It's pretty bad. If, you, if It's pretty awesome. That, that's what I meant by bad. If you watch my videos for the other Red Magics, I kind of went over those a little bit more extensively. But... Um, there's your, your pogo pin for the uh, for some of the um, neat little accessories they have for the phone. There's the switch that puts it into the game mode. There's the fan, uh, one of the fans for the one of the vents for the fan. USB Type C. Your uh, your can't really see it, but your SIM trays there as well. And um, it has your uh, your triggers for your shooting for your first person shooting games. There's a uh, there's another. Uh, Another vent for your fan there, your volume rocker and your power button, not a different color or anything like like it sh should have been. And uh, and there's your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is rare to see. Um, so um, you know, and there's there's the back of it here. The place where it says Red Magic lights up when you're in gaming mode. I'll try to get to that triple camera. This is also the first Red Magic phone to have more than just a single lens. Uh, even the 3S had a single lens, and they went to a triple uh, a triple lens setup on this. Your 5G logo is right there. So, uh, yeah, they, they made a big jump on this phone. They made a big jump. Um, it does have UFS 3.0, not not 3.1. But, again, it, the RAM is of DDR5 uh, quality, which is new, just as new as UFS 3.1. And um, so it was two things that I actually went over if you go back and watch my video for the Redmi K30 Pro 5G. And uh, both... Two brand new standards, and uh, personally, if you could only get one, I would want the DDR5 over the UFS 3.1 if I could only have one. The DDR5, I think, is a lot more important because UFS 3.0 is still a newish standard. It was a standard that just came out this time last year, if I'm not mistaken, with the, with, with the OnePlus 7. 
So, you know, that's not a big deal. You know, um, you know, you're not going to notice a, 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 a huge difference between UFS 3 and 3.1, but there are a few, 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 um, Things that I've read that, that said otherwise, I said it's actually pretty noticeable despite the, the small difference in, in the number from 3.0 to 3.1. But DDR5 RAM, however, you can definitely notice a difference. Um, so this is, um, I mean, th this is definitely top of the line, top of the line. Again, Snapdragon 865. I mean, man, and, and ugh, I have to say, I have to say, this phone, everything about it is flagship specs. Flag ship specs bro i'm sorry i know i just sounded just terrible trying to sound a little different from flossy but these are flagship specs seriously it does not get any better than this like i said this is a big jump for red magic triple lens camera from the single lens in display fingerprint sensor the previous red magics didn't have none of that uh they had the top of the line specs but they lacked in a lot of other departments um i did notice that they kind of went they kind of went a little deeper into their Red Magic UI, uh, which I, I don't favor. There's no, I haven't found any glitches. I watched a video where someone said that there was a lot of glitches in the software. I have yet to find any glitches. There's no hiccups. Um, but what I have, what I have, um, what I have kind of seen, um, what I have kind of noticed is that the previous Red Magics were a lot more stockish, whereas this, um, is is a lot more colorful, as as one review said, like color, uh, like color OI or UI. I'm sorry, color UI from um, Oppo, um, and uh, and uh, I think Realme also uses color OS. Um, this is a lot like color OS. Um, it does still have the app drawer, of course, you know, but um, everything's a little bit more colorful. They're more squarish instead of circular. I kind of wish that they would have stuck to the original design, the the original Red Magic UI, at least at least the interface that uh, that the other two Red Magic phones that I had used. And I had this one's predecessor and that one's predecessor. I had the Red Magic Three and Three S. I didn't have the ones before that. I didn't have the original Red Magic, and I didn't have the Red Magic Mars either, which is which was the second one. Um, but this is my third one, and uh, I mean, there, there's no hiccups in the software though whatsoever. Um. It runs just it runs it runs just as the other ones did, you know, running stockish. Um, this this is the the headline the head head headline for this phone is that it has a 144 refresh rate a 144 hertz refresh rate not 120, which is the big deal this year because the One Plus Eight Pro has that and so does the Galaxy S20 series. Um, but this phone has a 144 hertz refresh rate. And what makes it even more substantial on this phone is the fact that it is an AMOLED panel. If you haven't noticed, if you go back in the history books, every time a phone comes out with a new refresh rate, it's usually on, it's usually done on an LCD screen first before it's brought to an OLED. But the 144 hertz technology was brought to an OLED first. Um, and um, if I'm not mistaken, 90 hertz was brought to an OLED uh, with the uh, with the rock the original rock phone. But a lot of people didn't really pay that a lot of attention because the Razer phone had came out with a 120 hertz LCD, and uh, when the Rock phone came out, it it kind of it kind of stepped back from that to a to a 90 hertz. But you were getting an OLED as opposed to an LCD. I just think at that time, um, the anything higher than 90 hertz on an AMOLED was 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 a lot more expensive than doing so on an LCD. But whatever the case may be. ZTE, Nubia, Red Magic, they did it. And the price point is just phenomenal. I mean, um, the, the 144 hertz refresh rate alone just makes this phone just flagship along with the Snapdragon 865. Nubia is even coming out with a more mid-range gaming phone with the Snapdragon 7, with the Snapdragon 765. The 765G, of course, the gaming-centric one, which which would make sense being that it's the the phone I'm talking about is also going to be marketed as a gaming phone, but it's just under the Nubia name and not under the Red Magic name. Uh, I think it's the Nubia Play 5G, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it has a Snapdragon 765G, and it does 144 hertz. And I think it's also an OLED, but don't don't quote me on that. But honestly, the price for this with the 865 and the 5G is just unbeatable. I mean, this value is just incredible. Um, 
ultra gorgeous premium design. I mean, man, this thing it is this thing is no joke. The quality is here. It is gorgeous. I mean, fingerprint magnet. You got to excuse that there. I love every. I love the entire design of this phone. I mean, it is gorgeous. It has always it has an always on display. I also saw other reviews that talked about how the the in display fingerprint sensor was slow on this phone. And I, you know, I, I watched those videos to kind of kind of knew what to expect, so I wouldn't have my expectations so high. And I didn't, not at this price point. But I have to tell you. Those reviews must be pre-production models because, again, just like where they said the software had a lot of glitches, I haven't experienced any slowdown in the in-display fingerprint sensor. It works magnificently. I mean, is it, um, is it as fast as, as, as the OnePlus 7T Pro 5G McLaren that I had? It's not. It's not. But I will say this. It's quicker than my Galaxy S20 I had. Um, but, again, that's, a, that's the whole ultrasonic technology. That was supposed to be better than optic than the optic uh, based in display fingerprint sensors, and that's been proven otherwise since then. So that's probably why the S twenty to me is slower. Uh, you know, other people may have different experiences, but um, this phone is 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 gorgeous. Uh, you know, when you turn on the game mode here, let's see, put it on like this, and it just kind of the fans kick on, and the fans are a very subtle noise. I mean, it's not an annoying noise whatsoever. Uh, you see the RGB lighting here with the Red Magic logo. The um, the aluminum ones, the predecessors to this phone, actually had a lot more uh, RGB lighting. The little the little we see the little red accents over here. Uh, those those lit up as well on the um, on the um, the uh, the previous models, not just the Red Magic. Because you also notice here the emblem right here doesn't light up. It may in the settings. I, I I went to the settings to check on these, but not this. Uh, but I think this is the only thing that lights up. I could be wrong about that though. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the previous ones had had more RGB lighting. Um, but again, y'all y'all try not to hold me on that there. Um, I do want to. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to, because I'm I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I'm right about that there. You said I got the 144 hertz enabled there. Um, I mean, this, this, this phone is just awesome. Turn that cooling fan on. I had it off, I've turned it on and then back off there, but I don't see any other settings for it here. And, I, and I'm trying to hold another phone while I'm doing this. That's, you know, y'all gonna have to just kind of excuse me there. But, um, kind of put that back there. And you see here in the, in the, um, the status bar there too, it tells you uh, how many Hertz you're in there. Uh, 144. Out of the box, it defaults at 90 hertz, uh, but you can set it to 60 or 144. And um, you're probably not going to notice a huge difference from 120 to 144, but I, I still kind of do. And I don't know if that's just me, because I did use the Galaxy S20 for a couple months at 120 hertz, at full AMOLED, which is the resolution that this is in, because the S20 doesn't allow you to use 120 hertz on Quad HD. Um um, the 2K resolution, not yet. They're supposed to in a software update, but the um, the OnePlus 8 Pro already does. It already lets you use Quad HD resolution with the uh, 120 hertz uh, refresh rate. But the 144 hertz on this is definitely bragging rights. I mean, it has the processor. It has the mo. It has the 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 you know the it has um the um. The highest quality, the the best kind of RAM that you can get for this phone, if I'm saying it right there. Um, and uh, now a big question I've had, I, I, I know I'm going to have. One of my videos recently, somebody made a comment that uh, they, they really watch my videos because they love that I go over the phone's frequencies, which they don't get from a lot of other people's uh, videos. And I do apologize about that. Um, and this phone, there's a lot of confusion out right now about its available bands. Um... If you go on the Red Magic website, the store that you can order this at, for even for U.S., it's only listing the frequencies for the Chinese version. I kind of already knew that because I I, I stayed on the Chinese site um, quite often before this was ever like it was announced to come to the U.S., but we didn't quite know when. And uh, so I stayed on the Chinese site because it would oftentimes link to the U.S. site once it was um, announced, and. Um, if you check the bands for this and the Chinese one, they, they you know, on the website for this one for in the U.S. now, you know, because it's created since the phone's available now. 
the bands are exactly the same, and that that's 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 not gonna that's uh usually not the case. When most phones come here from China, it has a completely different set of frequencies. Usually, even a lot more frequencies than the Chinese version typically has. The Chinese ones, as far as five G goes, usually only has two. Sometimes three, if it's like a Xiaomi device or four. I saw the Black Shark three have, but um, this does have a lot more frequencies. I did look it up. Uh, it does have AT and T's um, sub six. Uh, the um, the uh, the N what is it N five? Um, it does have Sprint's N forty one, which is also compatible with T Mobile, the mid band. Um, it does. It, it should have T Mobile's frequency as well. The N N seventy one. I'm I'm pretty sure most. I haven't seen a phone yet that had N5 and not N71. But I have seen phones that had N71 and not N5. So, but I didn't see it listed. But a lot of times T-Mobile doesn't allow them to even list it unless it's been certified. And just because it hasn't been certified doesn't mean it doesn't work. So keep that in mind. I'll try to get a T-Mobile SIM to test that. I used to have one and I don't anymore because I, I do get T-Mobile 5G in my area. AT&T 5G actually just came out in my area um, as of... Um, man, I think the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, or the 21st, but AT&T is different from T-Mobile because you have to actually add 5G to the plan, and it's not available on AT&T prepay yet. It is supposed to come to Cricket. I don't know if it's coming to AT&T prepay. I may just end up switching over to a postpaid account just to get that 5G. It's the one thing I like a lot more about T-Mobile is the 5G is already included in the plan. Um, AT and T, they they make you pay extra for it, but it's it's really not that much more expensive than what T Mobile's plans already go for. Uh, T Mobile's kind of gotten, I guess, a little big for themselves now. They don't offer those cheap cheap plans that they used to. I mean, they're you know AT and T's prices are actually very competitive, uh, and my, and in my area, um, five G or not, I still get way better coverage with AT and T than I do T Mobile. So uh, AT and T is still my choice with or without five G. But uh, 5G sub-6, um, the 8500, or the the 850, I'm sorry, the 850 uh, hertz frequency just just uh, opened up here. Um, I knew it was coming. They decommissioned uh, band 5 for LTE here. Uh, so I had a feeling what was coming next. And sure enough, it was just announced a couple of days ago. Um, and this does this does have the 80, this does have the specifically, not just, not just for LTE, it doesn't just have 850 the 850 hertz band for LTE, but also for 5G. Um, what I did to find that out is I took down the uh, the model number of the phone. I didn't want to show my uh, my IMEI there, but um, I I took down the model number that's in the back of the box, and um, and I just like after after it, I typed in like 5G bands, I think, and uh, and I did it on Google, and it showed a site. Um, that how that had out of all of the uh, FCC listings, and FCC is specific to the United States, and it showed all of the uh, frequencies. And it even showed CDMA, and um, I just saw somebody uh, else who got this phone today as well that was commenting on another YouTuber's thing um, that did say he uh, did say it works flawlessly on Verizon. Um, I think he only meant 4G, not 5G. I don't I don't think this has any of the um, the millimeter wave technology for 5G. I, I could be wrong about that though. But it does have sub six for AT and T and Sprint for sure, and I don't see why it wouldn't for T Mobile. I think it's a certification issue, but um, but uh, it, I hope that clarifies it there. And uh, and, I, and and I'm really glad that someone paid attention and, and and actually told me, hey dude, you know you did a video, you didn't go over the frequencies. That's not like you. That's one of the reasons I watch your videos, and and that's great to know because. I know there's not much to my videos. My videos aren't as great as everyone else's. They're not as high quality. They don't go. I, I do a lot more talking than I'm actually going over things. I understand that. So I definitely appreciate that. But um, but um, yeah, this phone has been has been it's just it's gorgeous. It has the uh, gestures um, uh, by default. I'm sure it has the buttons there. I'm sure. But um, um, you know, you swipe for the back. And it does have the uh, it does have Google there, and um, has the app drawer. Like I said. Um, anyways, though, man, sorry for the long video, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this. This phone is freaking magnificent. Best deal on the market. I'm sorry. Th this phone is, this phone between the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro is a lot closer to the 8 Pro, and it, and, and it costs over $100 less than the regular 8. It's a no-brainer. This phone is just amazing. 
man, y'all check it out. Hit me up in the comments. Peace.